talk about the levels of organization. It's basically how a body or how an organism maintains homeostasis. So remember the term homeostasis. The, this term means that um, inside your an organism, there's a relatively constant internal and external conditions that try to maintain their balance inside the organism. So inside a human body, for instance, we have a lot of things going on that are trying to keep our insides at a nice temperature, at an, uh, a nice pH, and a whole bunch of things so our, our systems are balanced. So what's going on outside, our internal stuff, <laughs> our internal stuff is actually um, sort of balanced out with it. An example of this would be sweating. The reason why we sweat is because our insides are getting a little too hot. So our body releases that energy as sweat, and it's in the form of water, basically, but this is releasing the energy that's inside. So our body inside stays at a relatively uh, balanced temperature. Unicellular organisms grow, respond to the environment, they transform energy, and reproduce to maintain homeostasis. On the flip side to this, multicellular organisms have specialized cells that do this. So the cells of multicellular organisms become specialized for particular tasks and communicate with one another to maintain homeostasis. So unicellular organisms kind of have to do it all themselves because they are just one cell. However, multicellular organisms have cells that become specialized for those purposes. Now let's take a look at the levels of organization in organisms. Now this isn't for every organism, this is just basically the level of organization as we're moving up in the chain of um, organisms. So first we start with the organelles. We have these tiny structures within a cell. And an example would be a mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. Moving from the organelle, getting a little bit larger is the cell. Now the cell is the basic unit of all forms of life. When you put many cells together, they form tissues. Now tissues are a group of cells with similar structures working together to perform a function. So for example, a whole bunch of muscle or uh, cells working together might form muscle tissue. Muscle tissue is tissue that um, has a particular function, especially in the human body. Now, if we have a group of tissues working together, then we'll have an organ. So an organ is a structure made up of a group of tissues working together to perform specific functions. So a whole bunch of muscle tissue working together can be a heart. Your heart is just one big muscle working together to pump the blood throughout your body. Now a group of organs that have related functions, maybe they work together to form or perform a particular body function, is called an organ system. Now these organs might come together we have our heart, we have a variety of veins and arteries, and this creates a circulatory system. So as you see, the levels of organization starts really tiny. We start with an organelle, move to a cell, then a tissue, an organ, and then an organ system. So if we were to see this in pictorial form, you would see that we have these pictures here. So we start with an organelle. So if you take a look over here, this is just some random pictures, not necessarily in any particular order, but uh, this picture right here is actually of a chloroplast. So chloroplast is inside a plant cell. So here we have a couple organelles. Then we have a cell. In this case, this particular picture is of an animal cell. Then we have tissues, so tissues are groups of cells that work together to perform a function. These tissues will work together in order to form an organ. And then we have organs working together to form an organ system. And then eventually we have this cute little baby. We have an organism. Now we ha also have to take a look at structure versus function. And you're gonna see this an awful lot throughout the year. Kind of, 
we, we want to look at the structure of something because it might tell us about its function. So for instance, here's a couple structures and their functions and we can kind of guess a little bit about what might be going on here. So in your resp respiratory tract, you have ciliated cells. Basically, at the ends of some of those cells in your respiratory system, they have these little hair-like structures called cilia. Now these cilia allow mucus to move over them. Without these cilia, it would be much harder to remove this mucus from your lungs, let's say. So because of the structure of these respiratory epithelial cells, the function can actually work. It can move this mucus over them to remove the mucus from your lungs. And this is very important. People without these cilia on their lungs actually have cystic fibrosis. It's a very um, devastating respiratory disease. Plant root hair cells are made for absorption. So here's an example of a plant root cell. And notice this is the um, an end of a particular root hair cell. Notice how long it is. It is long and thin. This is designed to absorb water and nutrients from the soil. So it's extremely important that the structure matches the function. So we have our plant cell, or uh, the root cell I should say, trying to absorb all the nutrients and water being absorbed because this is very thin and it's uh, very long. And let's take a look at a few more. Um, in xylem vessels, xylem is in plants. Now these are designed for conduction and support. So basically, um, once we talk about water, you'll understand this a little bit better. But xylem vessels allow water and, um, basically water, I shouldn't say anything else, water to come up and stick to the sides of the xylem vessels. Now the xylem vessels are designed to be pretty thin and they also allow, they have these little openings between different cells which allow the water to move up the root or up the stem and the root. Now muscle cells are designed for contraction. So when your muscle is relaxed, it sort of looks like this. But once you contract it, let's say you make a muscle with your bicep, it's all contracted in here. So structure must meet function. And the red blood cell, your red blood cell isn't, um, it's more like a donut shape. It almost has a little dip in the middle, kind of like an inner tube, if you've ever gone on the inner tube down a river, except the inside is there, it's closed in. It's not like a full tube. But this is designed, it's a concave surface, and this is designed so it can actually have things attached to it. You're going to have your hemoglobin, you're going to have other things being attached to your red blood cells for transport. So they almost sit in these little areas. They also are designed this way to fit down your veins and arteries. So without this shape, this round shape, um, you could possibly have a disease called sickle cell anemia. And this is where you're basically this, this shell, uh, this round shape of your blood cell is kind of looks like a sickle. So it's a, an oval shape, a very thin oval shape, and that can get stuck inside your arteries and veins.